Hello everyone, this is Paris. Welcome to Budgetholics. I'm coming to you today with some major news on cryptocurrency. Fidelity has approved Bitcoin as collateral for US cash loans. This is a major development in the world of cryptocurrencies as now Bitcoin has entered one of the core facets of banking, which is lending, with a stamp of approval of a major financial institution. If you're into personal finance, investing and wealth building, please hit the like and subscribe button as this helps immensely with the YouTube algorithm. As I mentioned in my previous video on the best ways to make money in 2021, for which I leave a link somewhere around here and down in the description, Bitcoin has evolved into an increasingly normalized asset class from just a fringe bet. Today's video is another testament of how an increasing number of financial institutions are now becoming bullish on Bitcoin. To start with, let's talk briefly about the two main actors in today's story. Fidelity is a financial services company based in Boston, Massachusetts. It was founded in 1946 and currently has more than $3 trillion worth of assets under management. Back in August, they launched the first main Wall Street fund for Bitcoin with an initial buy-in of $100,000. This was major news back then as it underlined how Bitcoin was evolving into a stable and reliable asset class with Fidelity, one of the oldest and largest players in the financial services sector, investing in it. BlockFi is a fintech startup which was founded in 2017 by Zach Prince and Flory Marquez with the goal of providing financial services to markets with limited access to financial products. According to their website, their aim is to bridge the gap between traditional finance and the blockchain technology and provide lending and borrowing cryptocurrencies, stablecoins and USD powered by retail cryptocurrency balance. When it comes to any other currency, such as dollars, euros and pounds, you want to have a savings account with a high interest rate yield. Otherwise, you're just losing money due to inflation. BlockFi is a savings account for cryptocurrencies and it offers up to 8.6% APY for your deposits in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin and other cryptocurrencies. You can sign up with the link below and earn up to $250 when you deposit $25 or more. BlockFi is a place to store your digital currency. So in order to buy cryptocurrency, I'm using Coinbase, wherein you can buy cryptocurrencies with euros or dollars. Then I exchange it to USDC and send that USDC over to BlockFi to receive interest on it. You can sign up to Coinbase using the link in the description. And if you buy $100 or more worth of cryptocurrency, we'll both get a gift of $10 worth of Bitcoin. Notice I've just given you a deal for up to $260. So please hit the like and subscribe button so we can keep looking for those deals and bringing them to you. New cryptocurrencies also post videos there, which you can watch and then earn about $1 per minute of watching. Afterwards, you answer a short quiz, which is usually very easy, and you receive your rewards in your Coinbase account. So more free money for you. After BlockFi created a high interest savings account for cryptocurrencies, the next logical step would be to give you a way to spend those currencies. And what better way is there to do that than with a credit card? The year was 2020, and the world was a bit of a cluster. A global pandemic, political unrest, and endless money printing was taking up everyone's mind share. Through it all, Bitcoin continued to strengthen. But the Bitcoin faithful were unimpressed with endless debit cards, encouraging them to spend their crypto or earn rewards in some coin. They wanted something they could be proud of and evangelize to their mainstream friends. In 2020, BlockFi embarked on a quest to bring Bitcoin to the masses in a way that had never been done before. Everything was about to change with the launch of the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards Credit Card, a sleek and sexy card that earns a market-leading Bitcoin rewards rate on every transaction. Spend credit, earn Bitcoin. Clients can now join the waitlist to receive a BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards Credit Card launching in early 2021. Once you sign up to BlockFi and make your first deposit, you can join the waitlist and earn 1.5% cashback when spending your crypto with this new sleek card. BlockFi also has a loan service, which allows you to borrow US dollars using your crypto balance as collateral. 
This brings us to this week's news. Fidelity Digital Assets will allow its institutional investors to pledge Bitcoin as collateral against cash loans in partnership with BlockFi. What this means is that even hedge funds, crypto miners and over-the-counter trading desks will now be able to apply for loans by offering their cryptocurrencies as collateral, similarly to how you can receive a mortgage by offering your house as collateral. These clients will need to create a BlockFi account and receive their cash loans from BlockFi using their deposits of digital currencies in Fidelity as collateral. Still, many investors are bearish in cryptocurrencies. This means that they do not believe in their potential as an asset class. Warren Buffett has called Bitcoin a mirage and Charlie Munger, the other head of Berkshire Hathaway, has called it a bubble. Those who are bearish in Bitcoin highlight the asset's high volatility its lack of backing by a central bank in the real economy, as arguments towards their lack of confidence in its potential as a long-term asset. Ray Dalio, another Wall Street legend, was also bearish in Bitcoin. In a Twitter thread, he expressed his three main concerns when it comes to Bitcoin. His first concern was that Bitcoin is not very good as a medium of exchange because you can't buy much with it. Secondly, it's not very good as a storehold of wealth because its volatility is great and has little correlation with the prices of what you need to buy, so owning it doesn't protect your buying power. Thirdly, if it becomes successful enough to compete and be threatening enough to currencies that governments control, the governments will outlaw it and make it too dangerous to use. Unlike gold, which is the highest reserve asset that central banks own, he can't imagine central banks, big institutional investors, businesses or multinational companies using it. Let's answer these questions, which are perfectly valid one by one. First, granted, Bitcoin is currently not widely accepted by all retailers. However, an increasing number of companies such as Microsoft, Starbucks, Home Depot are starting to accept Bitcoin payments. I'll leave a link in the description for 11 large companies that are now accepting Bitcoin payments. Regarding his second concern, it's true that Bitcoin has experienced extremely high volatility. However, according to a Fundstrat research, Bitcoin has proven to be the best performing asset of 2020, outperforming every other asset class such as treasuries, gold and bonds by at least 19%. I'll leave a link below in the description for Cointelegraph's article so you can read it for yourselves. When it comes to investing, especially in long-term investing, you're not interested in year-over-year -year returns as much as you're interested in the 5, 10 or 20-year returns. Looking at its 10-year performance from 2010 to the end of 2019, Bitcoin has yielded a return of 9 million percent. A number of analysts are uh, predicting that Bitcoin will reach a price of hundreds of thousands of dollars by the end of the next 10 years. However, these predictions are purely speculatory and they are no different than ancient oracles munching on leaves and herbs trying to predict the future. Looking at returns not only during 2020 but for the last 10 years, therefore debunks the purchasing power protection argument. Ray Dalio's third concern has two points. First, he argues that if Bitcoin is deemed harmful to national currencies, governments will outlaw it. And secondly, he underlines that gold is the asset most central banks hold in reserve. Now, up to the 1960s, you could exchange your dollar bills with a fixed amount of gold. This was called the gold standard. The exchange rate between dollars and gold was constant. However, after 1976, gold and the dollar were no longer connected by a fixed exchange rate, meaning that the dollars circulating across the globe no longer corresponded to a fixed amount of gold in the Federal Reserve's vaults. Regarding his last argument of how large institutional investors will not be willing to invest in Bitcoin. PayPal's acceptance of uh, trading and buying in cryptocurrencies and Fidelity's Bitcoin fund are just a few recent examples of how Bitcoin is indeed becoming increasingly attractive even to traditional investors. In Ray Dalio's defense, in a Reddit AMA held three days ago, he changed his stance on Bitcoin. Specifically, he said that he thinks that Bitcoin and some other digital currencies have over the last 10 years established themselves as an interesting gold-like asset alternatives with similarities and differences to gold and other limited supply mobile storeholds of wealth. 
so it could serve as a diversifier to gold and uh, other such stored wealth assets. The main thing is to have some of these types of assets, including stocks, in one's portfolio and to diversify among them. Not enough people do that. As far Bitcoin relative to gold, I have a strong preference for holding those things which central banks are going to want to hold an exchange value in what they are trying to transact. So Ray Dalio has not totally forsaken his previous statements. However, it seems that he is now joining the club of Bitcoin bulls, granted with a little bit of hesitance. Keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy making videos for entertainment purposes only. However, I am bullish on Bitcoin. Make your own research and decide for yourselves if you like it as an asset class or not. I will personally be allocating at least 10% of my portfolio to Bitcoin. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to help me bring you more content like this. Thank you everyone and have a great weekend.